Okay, hey everybody and welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we're actually going to do something we haven't done in a while, which is more um, chatting on a certain subject. So today we're actually going to cover smaller watches. So today I kind of have a broad assortment of watches that all are either 40 millimeters or below. And for the most part, um, the watches here are, are mostly below 40 millimeters. So this is a subject that kind of comes up every once in a while um, that I've noticed when I post on Instagram or when I post, you know, on any of the groups or the forums. And I went through the phase, so I figured, you know, I should probably address this in a video too. So at one point, you know, I mean, I still predominantly wear sports watches, um, specifically divers. And, you know, my sweet spot's kind of been the 42 millimeter you know, kind of area, depending on the case shape, sometimes, you know, up to a 44 um, or even a 45 will look great. You know, I, I think, you know, certain Seiko cases just wear much better, although they are larger, you know, like the Turtle, for example, or the Stargate, um, you know, the Marine Master. There are, there are certain watches that wear really well, um, although their specs kind of don't read that way. And because of that, I really missed out on a lot of smaller watches because, you know, I know, I remember specifically I'd see some watch was coming out and I'd see it at 38 millimeters and I'd be like, oh no, like I can't wear anything that's smaller than 40. The weird thing is though, I like 40 was kind of um, what I was going for, but I had no problem wearing a 42, right? Or a 44. So why not a 38? It's really just one millimeter difference, you know, on the outside of the case, right? On, on each side. So that's kind of, I, I had to learn to kind of wrap my head around it and, and really start, you know, understanding that the shape of the case really plays a big role and also you know and understanding that watches do look big in wrist shots um, when you have it on your wrist and you're just focused um, on your wrist certain watches will look really big and certain watches can look kind of small um, when you're just looking at it the wrist so it's really just a game of perspective and and case shape so I just thought I'd share a couple of my recommendations for smaller watches. Uh, that also comes up, you know, um, in the comments. There's always somebody who's kind of like, hey, it's great you're reviewing some smaller watches. You know, can we get an episode dedicated to that? So for those of you looking, here you go. So let's start off with this Mito Multi Fort. This is the 38 millimeter model. As you can see, I have it on this Hearst strap. Um, great rubber strap you know uh, I did have it I've had this on NATOs and Perlons and all types of straps um, leather on bracelet and right now I I really am liking it on this Hirsch um, accent pure rubber strap it's definitely really nice and I think it kind of suits the aesthetic and it really dresses the watch down I think that's actually kind of a fun thing for me um, when it comes to kind of the combinations for straps and, and whatnot that I try to put together to really personalize my watches. Um, you know, it is a very common affair for people to kind of personalize a sports watch with um, dressier straps, you know, putting a diver on, on crocodile or something like that. That's actually pretty common. Um, but, you know, the parallel side of it isn't as common. And I think that's kind of you know, that's something I like to explore, which is where I kind of try to dress down something that's really more meant to be a dress watch. And uh, I got to say, I really like this uh, Mito Multi Fort. You know, I think it looks great on the wrist. As you can see there, I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist and I think it looks great. Next, we have another Mito. It's the... Boroncelli um, Heritage. So this is a great watch. And you know, this again, this is one of those ones where, you know, the, the specs can be a little deceiving. You know, it comes in at 39 millimeters, but I mean, the dial is very large. You know, it, it really pushes out. And then it's so thin that, you know, when you're looking at it, it just makes the watch seem a lot larger. You know, honestly, I kind of wish this was smaller. I think most people, you know, they might see 39 and, and wish that it was a 40, but honestly, I think a 40 would look, you know, too big. And, 
you know, as you can see here, that 39 just fits really well. And I think it could even stand to be a little bit smaller and it would still look great. And you see the little blued hand there, very nice. So, I mean, this is a really sleek, sleek watch. Beautifully done, a huge fan. Um, there should be reviews for most of these watches um, throughout my channel. I know for this watch, I definitely have one. So just uh, if you're more interested, leave a comment or search through um, and we'll definitely, we can do one where we kind of highlight it. But you know, this is a great little dress watch um, and I dressed it down with this kind of, you know, vintagey midnight blue Horween uh, strap. You know, great looking movement, super thin. I mean, this is just incredibly, incredibly thin and, and well crafted. And, and it's a smaller watch that I can wear, you know, and I have an, I would assume it's above, I'd say probably above average wrist. You know, I think kind of seven is, you know, plus or minus is where most people are at. Um, I think so. I'm a little bit on the plus side of that. And I think this watch wears great. Now, in contrast, you know, right next to it, we have this Mark and Sons watch here, which is a, you know, a traditional marine style, marine chronometer style uh, watch, you know, enamel dial, blued hands, um, and it's a 40 millimeter. And because of the case shape, you know, it wears really nice. And honestly, it looks a bit big, right? I mean... But I think because it is meant to be kind of a little bit sportier and larger, because it, it really ties back into that marine chronometer styling, um, you know, it, it actually looks nice, a little bit larger and bolder. And at 40 millimeters, it's a little bit larger, right? Um, at 42, this would look nuts, you know, 43, 44. It just honestly, to me, it wouldn't look right. You know, you'd end up having a 22 millimeter, you know, bandwidth, and it just. It's just one of those things where uh, less is more. So great little watch if you're looking for something a little bit smaller. And this can easily be an everyday watch. It can be dressed up, dressed down. You know, you can put it on black leather. You can put it on crocodile. And, um, you know, it, it really dresses up nicely. And at the same time, you put it on kind of a vintage brown leather and it dresses down really nice. And it's something that you can, you know, throw on with jeans or a pair of khakis or a pair of shorts. Get it to focus there okay and maybe we can capture this great dial mark and sons you know hey well done on this because it is just a real looker and at the price pretty nuts and then of course nice display back that uh let me see if i can kick the rotor around 9015 great movement all right, now uh, here we have a, a great example of how the case shape really, you know, decides how a watch wear. This is a 38 millimeter and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look small at all. One, the dial is relatively large. It does push to the ends, but because of the wider lugs, because of the square shape, I mean, 38 in a square watch is, is actually fairly large, you know. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, your perspective is really skewed and, you know, the short stubby nature, um, I think really helps the watch wear nicely, you know, although it's larger for a square watch because of the shape of the case, you know, and, and the way they did the lugs, um, this nice slow Joe 01. Um, really, it just wears really nicely and it's really versatile. Um, so it is, you know, it's on the smaller side, but it wears, um, large for, for what it is. So, you know, and then it also has a 22 millimeter, millimeter lug width. And I think for this watch, it really suits it. I think you want something that's going to give you that kind of bold, um, space, you know, for a strap. And, uh, I gotta say, Real big fan, you know, I uh, have a review for this up uh, for sure. I mean, pretty much all of these I have a review up for probably besides the two on the end. Um, but, 
you know, I definitely recommend this watch. It's extremely affordable, Swiss made. I mean, just the quality is really, really nice. Um, I would be probably showcasing the automatic one here too, but honestly, the automatic is at 41 millimeters, so it just missed the cutoff um, to kind of fall into smaller watches. And because it's squared watch at 41 millimeters, it actually wears, you know, fairly large. Um, so I think it kind of uh, doesn't meet the same kind of understated minimalist tone that this watch has, you know, at the 38 millimeter case size. So you can see really nice matte silver dial. Really great. Great looking watch. Very comfortable. All right, here's a, a favorite. And then also a 40 millimeter, but when you think 40 millimeter, um, if now will we add a chronograph, you know, into the mix? We'll let that go. Nice little mecha quartz action there. And as you can see, <laughs> it's uh, almost 1030, which means the date is starting to change over. So sorry about that, but hey, um, I'm a part-time YouTuber. This isn't my job. I do this at night once the kids are asleep. So at 40 millimeters, this watch, um, from Seiko, you know, great panda dial, great, you know, classic stylings. I just matched it with um, this, you know, vintage style racing strap. And, um, you know, it, it shrinks everything down, right? So, you know, 40 millimeter with all the sub dials and everything it makes the, and the dial itself isn't really that big because there's actually a decent sized, you know, polished outer bezel here this watch wears really, really nicely. So it's sporty. And then I think the lugs, you know, um, although they appear a little bit long, maybe from the top view, when you see the side and see how they just turn down, it really um, shows that, you know, of course, like most any Seikos, I mean, they just wear really well. They're made to be worn. Um, and that's, I feel like that's always a huge part of their design philosophy at Seiko. It's not just something that looks good on paper. It's something that is meant to be worn as a tool as well. So love this watch, you know, 40 millimeters. Hey, it's one of the larger watches here, but you know, honestly, again, you know, like the Marine chronometer style watch from Mark and Sons, that watch, you know, those traditionally are larger watches and traditionally also you know, um, chronographs are larger watches because you want them to be more legible. Um, of course, you know, a vintage style, there's some smaller, really small chronographs out there, but you know, I'd say in, in modern time now, you'll find most chronographs are relatively large. So, um, I think this is a great piece, extreme. If you can still find them, I mean, they were pretty abundant before I put out my review and they're even, uh, they're just, they've gone extinct pretty much. Um, so I'm glad I bought two. Uh, one my son wears, uh, kind of has his fun first Seiko. Um, get it to focus here. And uh, I mean, it's just very classic colors. It's just a, a great piece, you know, nice size. And honestly, somebody sees this on the wrist and they could easily confuse it for something that's vintage. I mean, it's just, um, it's an extremely you know, well-wearing watch. It's a real looker and it packs a lot of punch at that. 40 millimeter size. Next, we have an awesome piece that I recently reviewed. Whoop. From Watches by Nick, which is the Orion Project. This is the Orion One um, with the blue font dial um, option. And this watch, you know, again, he does catch a lot of flack, like, like many, you, you know, um, watchmakers out there. You put out a a 38 in this day and age and there's a lot of people that are upset and they think it's too small they want a 40 they want a 42 um, but I think for this watch I mean just the way it wears I mean it just belongs in this 38 millimeter size I mean look at that and then again similar thing you know uh, where from the top view it might appear like those lugs seem a little bit long but then you look at the side view and you get it right it, it um, they do come out, but they curve down and they just wrap around the wrist and they just guide, you know, whatever bracelet or strap you have on to just, you know, just comfortably just hug that wrist. And that, and that's really great. And, and I like that, you know, um, that's from such a relatively new uh, watch designer and watchmaker 
you have that thoughtfulness, you know, and how something wears versus just how something looks when it's off the wrist, right? Because you you know, yeah, your your watch spends a lot of time in the box, you know, um, but you know, when you're going to be appreciating it is when it's going to be on your wrist, right? Not when it's on the winder, which I mean, that can be fun too, but. I mean, this watch was meant to be worn and it just catches the light and it plays with it. And um, it's just, it's, there's just, although so simply executed, there's just so much thought um, that went into, you know, every nook and cranny of this watch. It's just so purposeful. I just, I just really enjoy it. Um, and I think, you know, hey, my hat's off to Nick Harris. Uh, great work. So next, we have a real classic here the Hamilton, you know, um, khaki mechanical. So it's the hand wound movement, which is nice because it's extremely thin. And what's great about when you have a very thin watch like this, um, let's see if I can get it to focus, there you go. When you have something as thin like that, you know, you don't have to worry about that, that rotor in there. But, um, so they have a really great thin case. And now you can actually put this on a NATO and it's still super thin, right? Like the Mito is extremely thin. I mean, and this is an automatic, which is a crazy thing. And just to compare there, you know, <laughs> that's, that's pretty nuts, right? I mean, uh, a manual hand mount mu movement that doesn't even have to worry about a rotor is thicker, you know, I mean, sure. It's just a couple of millimeters. Um, but, I mean, just to to show you really the thinness of this watch, it's it's pretty amazing. And then you can look, right? Although these are both 38 millimeters, um, I mean, look at the dial, right? The size of the dial plays such a huge deal. Look how much bigger this watch appears side by side, and it's because it has a bigger dial. It's not a bigger case. It's just that the dial is larger. It stretches out, and it really pushes, and it just makes. And then of course. Then you add the fact that it's a much less busy dial, right? It's it's really a lot more minimalist. So, in comparison to this busier dial that's smaller, you know, in diameter, it's you know, I think it's just one of the things that helps us contribute to wearing relatively small, you know. And I think there are a lot of people out there who might think this is too small for them. But the great thing about wearing it on a NATO is that it adds just a little bit of that visual weight. So although it's it's smaller and it's slim and comfortable. If you wear it on a NATO, you know, just that hardware that's there, the, you know, the multiple layers of nylon, it really adds visual weight and it helps this watch not appear small. You know, I think, you know, maybe with all close up on it right now, you know, it's, it's throwing off probably the scale a little bit in what you're seeing. But I mean, this watch wears great. And, um, there was a time when I would be you know, way too self-conscious to wear something at that size because I just thought that, you know, it be just using a simple numbers game and not looking at the design, not looking at the theme of the watch and the type of the watch, um, I would just rule out, you know, watches like this. So I'm really glad that I made it through that phase and I'm hoping that this video will help a couple of you be so bold to wear a smaller timepiece. You know, I'm not saying change every watch in your collection. I'm still going to enjoy, you know, big <laughs> chunky divers as well. But, you know, I got to mix it up. Here's a watch that I actually wore during my time in the Marine Corps, if you don't know. Um, I was in the Marine Corps for about 10 years. I only got out. I mean, I wanted to stay in forever, honestly. Um, but I hurt my back, and it was time to just kind of let the young dogs run. So um, I, I, now I live a life of leisure, <laughs> and I do YouTube videos um, in my spare time. So... Um, I do have a day job as well, but so it's not as leisureful as I'd like, but you know what I mean. So this watch is really small, you know, um, but it, this is, it's really rugged. You know, again, this is like another 38 millimeter size, uh, but it has a smaller dial, you know, it has, you know, a larger outer bezel. So, you know, it makes the watch seem smaller. Um, but I mean, this is a watch that I, you know, I wore in uniform that I wore with my camis that I wore while I was forward deployed. So, I mean, if you're trying to, you know, achieve that tough look, you don't necessarily need a big chunky tool watch to give you that robust, you know, status. You can do that and you can make, you know, you can put together something as simple as this, as cheap as this, you know, it's a $30 watch. Um, you know, on a little $10 NATO, and it just 
gives you something really special. So now, um, here we go. I don't think I've ever had this one in any of the videos. This is just a fun little piece I had put together by uh, Tiger Concepts. It's one of their uh, V3 big crowns with Miyota 9015 movement, as you can see. It definitely is paying homage <laughs> to vintage Rolex big crown. Um, but, you know, I chose to go with, you know, um, black sterile dial um, as well as um, sword hands for more of a mill sub style look. So it's kind of a mashup of a couple of different styles that I really enjoy um in kind of vintage rolexes and you know of course had to have it on the admiralty, admiralty gray nato um which is definitely one of my favorite nato colors that are out there you know the red um bezel pip here it's just get a little idea of the action for you for those of you interested great deal um and it's fun that you can kind of just spec it out and they put it together for you, you know, and you can really customize. So it's not just about what's available on the site. There's also a lot of other options. And, you know, again, now this is a watch that's really, you know, again, it's small and I probably would have written it off before, but on wrist, especially now that it's on this NATO, it just wears really nice, right? Like you almost think that looks big. I mean, it's not going to look big on person, you know, when I'm wearing it and like if you were to just get a full body shot of me standing there from head to toe, this watch wouldn't look big at all. But I mean, it's gonna look, you know, like a nice size on the wrist for a close up. And uh, you know, when you check your, your watch, it's it's not gonna feel small, you know, it's it wears nicely. And um, you know, it does have some visual weight added, you know, with that nice domed sapphire. Um, and then you also pair that with the NATO and you know it's it's a good sized you know little diver watch right and it's hard with divers to make them smaller because they inherently are going to have a smaller dial because they have to have room for that rotating bezel um, so when you can find something that is going to work like that for you it, it's fun it's nice and you know it's uh, clearly not a Rolex but you know sorry I didn't have six figures to, to drop on some cool vintage Rolex, but then I wouldn't have wanted to, you know, modify it and kind of personalize it. So, you know, it, it has its place in my collection. Is it's a fun little beater watch. So, um, thanks for hanging in there, guys. I know this was kind of a longer one, but for those of you that have been waiting for, you know, a video about, you know, just smaller watches in general, 40 and below. Hey, um, I made this video for you guys. So let me know your thoughts. In the comments below, you know, uh, when did you, in your journey of collecting watches, start moving into either larger sizes, smaller sizes? How did that go for you? You know, where are you now? Um, do you feel like you want a lot of smaller watches? Maybe you're moving away from sports watches and going into dress watches, and maybe you're even looking at more traditional sizes like 35 millimeters. Um, so, I'd love to hear uh, your guys' feedback. So if you found the video entertaining or enjoyed it, uh, go ahead and hit like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.